pilgrimage to Mecca, Muhammad's home city. A Muslim, then, is a person who submits to Allah by believing what he's told to believe by Allah and Muhammad and by doing what he's told to do by Allah and Muhammad. So the function of Islam, its role in the life of a Muslim, is telling the Muslim what to believe and what to do in order to submit to Allah properly. If we'd like a more scientific description of Islam, we can think about what Islam is made of. Just as we discover that a water molecule is composed of two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom connected by covalent bonds, we can also discover that Islam is a collection of teachings and practices that were common in Arabia during the time of Muhammad. There was Jewish monotheism right there in Arabia. The Jews had also written tons of stories that were recorded in the Talmud and other sources. Many of these stories were based on biblical characters, but they were obviously false. Stories about Abraham being delivered from a fire, or a bird teaching Cain how to bury his brother, or Solomon talking to animals. These stories were fictitious, but now they're in the Quran. There were also various teachings about Jesus and Mary that certain heretical Christian groups believed. Stories about Jesus speaking at birth, Jesus giving life to clay birds, Mary giving birth under the palm tree, and so on. No historian on the planet believes that these stories are authentic, but they were popular in Arabia during the 7th century, and now they're in the Quran. The Sabians, who are mentioned several times in the Quran, recited a creed, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. Muhammad simply added the words, and Muhammad is his messenger. The Sabians also prayed at all five of the times Muslims pray during their prescribed daily prayers. Some of the Persians believed that after death a paradise of sensual delights awaited them, complete with hordes, the perpetual virgins Muslims believe they'll be awarded in paradise. And let's not forget about the pagans of Arabia. The pagans of Arabia, the polytheists, performed ablutions, the ceremonial washings performed by Muslims today. The pagans prayed facing Mecca. They fasted during the month of Ramadan. They took the pilgrimage to Mecca and circled the Kaaba. They kissed the black stone. These were all pagan practices that were very dear to the polytheistic, idol-worshipping Arabs. Now they're part of Islam. Putting all of this together, what is Islam made of? It's a collection of 7th century Arabian beliefs and practices that received Muhammad's stamp of approval. What role does it play in the lives of Muslims? Muhammad made these 7th century Arabian beliefs and practices a necessary part of submission to Allah. Where do you find Islam and how much of it is there? There are more than a billion and a half people spread around the world who are convinced that they can only submit to Allah by unquestioningly adhering to this collection of 7th century Arabian beliefs and practices. Simple question, simple answer. Refreshing, isn't it?